You don't like talking too much about, about Down syndrome because you don't want it to be the only thing people talk about. Right. And it's just part of who I am, and that's really it. I, my parents were the ones that made me, and I just see them in me and nothing else. It's really, really exciting. Congratulations on this film. How are you feeling about it? I'm feeling very good about it. I feel so powerful about it. I love every single minute of it. It was so much fun to make. Well, for people who haven't seen it yet, talk to me a little bit. So Costantino shows up kind of later in the film. She's so kind of um, popular that her friends are chanting her name. <laughs> Tell me first a little bit about who Costantino is. So Costantino is basically based off of me. Oh, so really? my personality is basically all Costantino's stuff it's very sassy very out there very like pop and bubbly and all that stuff so it's so easy to play her and it was just so much fun being her in the movie who the hell are you i'm marcus the coach uh welcome to the team cosentino look don't flirt with me okay let's keep this professional i miz Cosentino to you. They contacted you over Instagram to ask you? Yeah, so they reached out to me over Instagram saying I need you to do these self-tapes. And then I got a call back from my agent, Diane, modeling agent, who said, um, Madison, what do you want to hear, good news or bad news? I said, obviously good news, right? Yeah. So uh, he's like, well, you got the movie part. I'm like, wait, what? That's my reaction to it. I got so excited. <laughs> and then my mom was with me crying. Yeah. I first thing I told my dad, he was freaking out. Yeah. And then I told like my everybody. Like I told everyone. Everyone got so happy, so excited. I had to go to Winnipeg for a full two months, I want to say three months. Yeah. For filming. And I just made all these new friends that I'm so happy to be calling them my friends and being my family. Tell me a little bit about your first day on set. My first day on set, I didn't know how to feel. And I walked on, and all these cameras were on me and everything. It was my first scene ever, the ballerina scene. And I just remembered the way I felt. And I didn't know what to expect. And I walked in, and everyone just made me feel like at home. Oh, that's really lovely. Did you, did you, did you, like, um, did you have a bit of um, nervousness or anything like that? I don't really remember exactly, yeah. but I think I was. And then some, so my acting coach, I was in helping us with the friends. His yeah. name is A.B. Bobby Fairley is the director of the movie. So A.B. is his son, and he was the acting coach that helped all the friends. Yeah, the friends are the basketball team in, yes. the, in, in the show, right? So nine boys, and I'm the only girl on the team of friends. And did you get to, uh, how's Woody, what's, what's Woody Harrelson like? Woody is super cool. I love him. Every single day, I'd walk on set, he'd give me the best hugs, the best advice, and just being who he is. What was the advice he gave you? I just remember him like always putting me on the spot. Like sometimes he would say banana or something like that or egg. And he would, he would just pick Madison. You could do this. Don't worry. <laughs> you got this. Why did he say a random word? He would just say a random word yeah, to you? Yeah, sometimes. And I just have to follow along with that. And that was like really hard. Did you play much, did you play much basketball? Like did, was that a part of your life up to no. this point? <laughs> I have not played basketball at all. But I, through this movie, it has helped me and shown me that anything is possible if I put my mind to it. How was the how was the basketball part? How did you do with that? I think it was good. <laughs> did you have to play a lot like by yourself? Have you, or like... have you watched the movie? Yeah, yet? I, say I watched the movie. Yeah. Oh, good. How do you like, think about it? I really liked it. I thought you were really great in it. I thought it was raunchy at times, raunchier than I thought Thanks. it was going to be, like dirtier than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> um, I thought it was funny. I thought you were really great in it. Thank you. Because if you if you see that part in the movie, that um, James, so his character name is Benny in the movie, yeah, and he was the one that helped me with basketball, and he actually lifted me up so I could take one of those shots. Oh, very very cool. Now, what's the story um, I heard about? Uh, so you have this line with Woody Harrelson <laughs> in the film, and then it ends up getting on Twitter somehow. Do you know what I'm talking about here? McConaughey. Yeah, tell me that's so so for people who haven't seen the film. What's the, what's the line in the movie? Makes sense. You know, McConaughey. You say that to Woody. Because he's, he's talking. Look, yeah, so I look basically head to the toe first, up to the head. And I, then at that point, when I actually say, see him hit by his face, I say, you're not McConaughey. You're not McConaughey because he's having a hard time with his dating life. Right. Thing, and right? girlfriend problems. Yeah. And so what happened? So McConaughey wrote. He wrote back and said, I don't remember exactly what he said, but I said, I stand by my word of what I said in the movie <laughs> to make him also feel good too, right? Oh, that's very sweet. Mm -hmm. um, um, 
It's a really amazing story to, to, to have you here. We've been looking forward to having you on for a really long time. Talk to me a little bit about kind of the, the, kind of the first time you became known publicly. You made a YouTube video, I think it was 10 years ago, mm-hmm. singing the John Legend song, All of Me. Yes. What, what, tell me, what can you tell me about making that video? Why did you make that video? So I started with a vocal coach. Her name was Marla. And I really wanted to do something with her. I wanted to do a song. And she decided that song. And we did it together. And I felt really good about it. And then what was it like when you found out that the video started to go viral? Because as I said before, it was really my family and friends. Yeah, but it was just it, for family and friends. Yeah. yeah, but then when it got picked up, I just went crazy. It must have been a really crazy feeling. Yeah, but also John Legend also retweeted it too. Oh, no, yeah. No, Le- not John Legend, but Ashton Kutcher retweeted it. And I saw it and I got like, so surprised and so happy. Did you ever hear from John Legend? Never heard from him, just Ashton Kutcher. Come on, John Legend. I know, right? Get it together. Yeah. You know? Get off the internet. Come on. Give, give you a call. Yeah. That's what I think. Me too. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. Imagine if I brought him in right now. Oh, I would love that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's not here. I didn't. I couldn't get him. But, you know. We'll, we'll, we, could we'll, try, we could try together. We're going to try together to get John Legend to come, come on and talk to you a little bit. Perfect. Did you always want to act? I never knew I wanted to act, actually. It was only when I got this movie that I, this is what I decided what I really wanted to do in my life. Well, because music was a big part of your life before yes. that, right? Music has all been around me all my life. My uncle is in a band, he used to be in a band, but he plays the piano, and my nonno plays the accordion. So I just was grew, grown up with it, and all I do is belt and uh, belt music all the time. Wherever I, I am in the car, with friends and family, we always have music on, playing in the house, and it's always too much fun for me. What? I can't stop myself not to dance. What, the worst what, thing. What, what kind of songs were you singing growing up? Um, I remember. Well, now I'm more into the '90s now that I'm older, mm-hmm. and like the Backstreet Boys and stuff. Mm-hmm. But now I'm loving still like Ariana Grande, like the pop hits, like mm-hmm. Shawn Mendes and Charlie Puth is my all-time favorite right now. I tell you what song I like by him is that. Um, do you know that one? You just want attention. Yeah, that's one of my favorites. So you were growing up singing a lot of music. Yeah. And, and you really, music was a really big part of your life. It was. It really was. Big part of your, big but part dancing of was just like for fun in the house, but that's it. So so when, when but you said like, you know, acting was something you sort of always wanted to do. Right. And, I, and I'm also so natural on camera. So when I did my show, it was actually very easy for me because I'm a big talker. I love asking lots of questions, getting to know someone of who they really are. So when I did the show, it actually helped me with my curiosity to the test. Well, let, let's let's talk about the show. So the, yeah, the, TV, the TV show you're talking about is Who Do You Think I Am? You had a dream, like me, you had a dream of being a, a talk show host, right? Right. It's always something I knew that I really wanted to do. I, I feel like I was born to it because I just would never stop talking. Mm. My mom, like, Madison, stop talking. <laughs> so only sometimes, <laughs> not all the time, though. Because I'm just, like, I'm natural at that, just talking to anybody I meet. I work the room wherever I am. So it's just, like, easy for me. So it was actually my stepdad's also idea to have something like this. And then I just fall through with it. It's sort of, it's sort of about people who are misunderstood or, or underestimated, yeah. is that right? So basically the show is about breaking down stereotypes and barriers and not being judged for the way we look. And with these people coming in, saying these stories is very powerful. It's often people asking you questions back as well. Like, like you'll ask questions. I watched one the other day about you were interviewing somebody with a neck tattoo Oh, yeah? Yeah. It was from, from three, two or three years ago, and he had a neck tattoo, and he was talking a little bit about Oh, like, yeah, ham bone. Ham bone. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, that was on YouTube yeah, still. Yeah, that was back when he was on YouTube, so I watched that one. And I noticed that like oftentimes they'll, they'll talk to you about maybe being um, underestimated or misunderstood, having Down syndrome. Like They, they talk to you as well, They right? really made me open up more. So I feel like when I, in the show, the first episode is the birth papaya Sarah and I feel like she really opened me up in what Down syndrome really means to me and I don't like talking about it a lot so she like really helped me put me out of my comfort zone and let me speak about it so I felt good about that and she helped me with that. You don't like talking too much about about Down syndrome because you don't want it to be the only thing people talk about. Right and it's just part of who I am and that's really it. I my parents were the ones that made me and I just see them and me, and nothing else. How do you change yourself by hosting this talk show? Do you feel like you're, you're a different person because you're having these conversations? Yes, I do. And I feel more comfortable about talking about these topics and stuff now. Now that I'm older, it's, help, it's been helping me. What's, what's the most 
because I, I, it's rare that I get to talk to someone who also talks to people for a living. Like it's, it's rare that I get to talk to someone like you who is also interviews people. I know. And this is, this is really what I want to do. If acting didn't really work out, that's what I would be doing. But it is working out, and I'm very happy about it. How do you, like, what's the most surprising thing that you've found about interviewing people and hosting a talk show? Like, Lane Webber, for, for instance. Yeah. He is a musician. Yeah. And um, he took another lane to take, road to take. And I didn't, I, that really shocked me. He loved music, but he wanted to do something else. So that really shocked me. With Tyler Shaw, he's a musician as well, but he saw that that was his outlet. And soccer was something he wanted to do. But now music is part of his life and what he's doing now. So soccer now is his outlet. So he's helped me to cope with strategies to make me feel calm and not to stress so much. Yeah, so what are some strategies for when you feel a bit stressed or you feel? Take a deep breath. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Yeah, take a deep breath. Do something you love to do. For me, it's music. So if I put on music, I just feel I'm perfect. Yeah. No matter what I'm doing, put music on and everything is perfect. Right. My confidence is built up. Everything is perfect. My sass is more comes through when I have music on and being around people that I love. These are the things that when you're stressed can kind of chill you out. It would be very fun if you came on my show because we could, I could interview you too. I'll come on your show whenever you want. Perfect. You got it. I'll come on your show tomorrow hey. if you want me to. I'll okay. Come, I'll come on your show right now. You, Good. Can, you can ask me, ask me a question right now if you want. <laughs> Do you want to ask me a question right now? I was just thinking season two, because if anything happens with the show and gets picked up and everything, I'd yeah. love for you to be on season two. I'll come on season two, no problem at all. Perfect. Yeah, and I'll, answer, I'll answer any questions you got. I'm here. Okay, good. You, I heard you recently published a letter to your future self. Yes, I did. Why did you want to write that letter to your future self? To reflect on my life. Oh, yeah? And what I've done, and people that I'm dying to meet, like Drew Barrymore. Uh -huh. I love her, and I want to to do something with her. Jennifer Aniston, Adam Sandler, uh -huh. Blake Lively, and Ryan Reynolds. I think you can talk to those. To I think we can get them on your show. Perfect. Imagine if they just walked in right now with John Legend. I would freak out. I would freak out. You know what? <laughs> I'd freak out too. I would just be like in awe when I see Jennifer Aniston. I would just like literally look at her and just like squeeze her and hug her up so tightly. I watched her and Drew Barrymore on the Adam Sandler thing the other night. Did you see that? I saw them together and actually funny story on Instagram I was the one trying to say is there a fourth person so I can come in too? <laughs> <laughs> you and Adam Sandler and Drew Barrymore and Jennifer Aniston. Yeah that'd be like the best thing ever. I know I really like Adam Sandler too. Um, I love his movies. They're so good. He's so funny and you're yeah. so good. I mean that this movie Champions is so good and you're so good in it. Well, thank you. The, the, when you look back at the process of making Champions, what is the most meaningful thing you've taken away from that? The, the friendships has been made. I feel that's the biggest thing is relationships and how I made them. Yeah. And, and, and are you going to continue movie acting and all that stuff? I really want to. There's something now I, I know I want to do. Before I didn't, 